Hello everybody, I'm Adam Welch. Thanks a lot for joining me back for a, another episode here. This is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a long time and seeing how I know a lot of you guys are stuck at home due to this shit show known as coronavirus, I thought it was a perfect time to go ahead and get this done. So today we're going to be doing something I've never done before and I wanted to bring you along with me. We are going to be developing our own color positive film, our own slide film using the Arista E6 home development kit. This is the one core kit. I'm not sponsored, of course, by Arista. I just uh, use their kits for my C41 processing and I thought I would try out their E6. Now, why am I going to do this? You may be asking, well, I've just had really bad experiences sending off my uh, E6 development film, uh, my E6, E6 process film, namely, uh, what we're going to be doing today, my Provia 100F here. I've sent it to some fairly reputable, supposedly, labs, and it's either came back, uh, scratched up some weird color shifts. I can see some fuzz and some dirt on the film, and that's just a standard I don't uh, really appreciate. And actually, it's below the standard I hold myself to at home when I'm develop, uh, developing my own film. So I thought I would just, like I said, go ahead and give it a try. Why not? Now the difference between a C41 process or a CN16 process or a color negative film is that a color negative film is exactly that. It is a negative. The colors are reversed. It looks kind of weird, kind of psychedelic. Whereas a color positive film or what's known as a slide film or a color reversal film like our Provia here is a color positive. That means it's not a negative. The piece of film itself looks like a little tiny picture. This is the kind of stuff that you put in those old slide projectors. It shoots the light through it and what you see is what you get. Now E6 development is a little bit intimidating for uh, some home processing, namely because it is very temperature dependent. It can, it's not as forgiving as C41 processing can be and C41 is not as forgiving as black and white processing can be. But I guarantee you if you've ever developed your own film at home, whether it's black and white, and especially C41, you can do E6 development. I have never done E6 at home. That's why, again, I wanted to take you along with me on this experience to show you either how hard it is or how easy it is, and I'm hoping it's going to be the latter. Okay, so that's enough talking this up. Let's go ahead and mix up our chemicals so we can get to development. I'm gonna open up the box here. And if you've done any kind of development with C41, especially the C41 Arista kit, you'll know that you have quite a few chemicals and this is the liquid form of the chemical. They do make it in a powder. Now, the only difference between C41 processing, uh, namely with the C41 Arista kit and the E6 Arista kit is that you have the addition of one more chemical. With C41 processing, you have a developer, a Blix, and something called a stabilizer. With E6 development, or I think it's also called CR56 development, uh, at least with this particular kit, yours may vary, um, I'm, so I'm using the Arista, you have a first developer, which is more or less a black and white developer. Then you have something called a color developer, which this will essentially chemically reverse the image on your film. You can do this actually by exposing the film to light after the first developer, but just for the sake of simplicity, the uh, thank God the Arista kit uses this um, color developer, which is going to do all that for us inside the tank. Lastly, in the E6 kit, you're going to have your Blix. This is the same kind of Blix or bleach fix that you find in a lot of C41 processing kits. A bleach fix is uh, really a two-part chemical in one solution. Some kits will have a bleach and then a fixer as separate solutions, but this one is going to be all in one. It makes it a lot easier. Now there's some contestation between uh, whether or not you should use a two-part bleach and fix or whether or not Blix is fine. I've always used a single Blix solution that comes in the kit, never had any trouble, but it is what it is. I don't think you'll have any trouble using the single Blix solution. Okay, so this is 
all of our chemicals that we're going to mix up here. Normally, and I know this is, uh, I'm probably going to catch a lot of flag for this, I usually don't use distilled water when I'm mixing my chemicals. I usually do a distilled water bath at the very end. The last rinse, I put in some distilled water and some photo flow, Kodak photo, uh, photo flow, just to help with those hard water spots since I'm using the tap water. But uh, here, I am going to use distilled water simply because uh, this E6 kit does not use a stabilizer like C41 does at the end. That's usually what I mix with distilled water. So I'm going to, uh, I've got this cheap little jug of distilled water and I'm going to mix up these chemicals, let them set for, I don't know, probably let them set overnight. The only reason I'm doing that is because if you use some powdered chemicals, you need to mix them, uh, mix them at a higher temperature, let them sell, uh, settle out. But since we're using the liquid, I'm going to mix them at room temperature, whatever the ambient temp temperature is, but I am going to let them set for a while just to mellow out. And then tomorrow, which will be a couple of seconds for you guys, but about 12 hours for me, we're going to heat all these up. And then that's when we're going to do our development. Anyway, let's go ahead and mix these suckers up here. So to do that, I've got our little accordion bottle here. I highly recommend these because they let you squish out as much oxygen as you can after you have the chemical in the bottle and that's really going to extend your chemistry life considerably. Now I would normally recommend uh, at least some gloves here, but this is the real world. I'm not telling you not to wear gloves. All I'm saying is there are a lot of other things in the world that would hurt you a lot more than these chemicals. But again, I highly recommend you wear personal protective equipment during all your film development. Next, I'm going to add in 708 milliliters of good 99 cents a gallon Kroger distilled water. There's 500. And 208, roughly. Okay. So that, give it a good shake. to squeeze carefully the air out of it. Put the top back on. And I've already labeled these beforehand with the date. So there you go. And that's how that accordion bottle works. It squeezes all that air out. So it's kind of nifty. Highly recommend those. Now the reason that I am adding in the developer solutions and all the solutions in general first is because I don't want to contaminate my measuring cup because just a drop of this stuff going over can mess up the whole situation. Now with C41, you don't wash between your uh, development cycles, but with E6, you have to wash between the first developer, the second developer, between the second developer and the Blix, that kind of thing. So I'm doing all this so I don't cross contaminate my chemicals. Okay, next we're going to be mixing up our color developer. This is going to be an A and B solution. But like I said, following the instructions, it's easy peasy. So I'm going to put these inside of the jug here. Again, it doesn't hurt to wear some PPE, some personal protective equipment, gloves, goggles, all that good stuff. I am not. So I'm not saying I'm setting a good example here, but that's just what we're gonna do. In goes part A. And now down the hatch with part B. Oh yeah. I will say, folks, do this in a well-ventilated area. 
because you can see that stuff coming off of there. Again, wear gloves. Do as I say, not as I do. Anyway, so consulting the instructions here for our second developer, our color developer, we're going to need 650 milliliters of water for that one. Measure out 500. In we go. What did I say? 650. So we need 150 more. Top on. Make sure it's really, really, really on. Get that shake. Squeeze the air out. Top back on. And there is our color developer. Lastly, we're going to mix up our blicks, our bleach fix. This one is a three-parter, an A, a B, and a C. So we're gonna get this started up. Be very careful with your blicks. Uh, of course, be very careful with all this stuff, but be careful with your blicks because blicks will stain your clothes in a heartbeat it's very it looks just like iodine and it stains just the same so in goes the first part in goes the second part and you can see just this is what's going to make it really dark you can see how gnarly that looks Careful, careful. And here comes part C, our third part. And the water for the blicks is going to be 414 milliliters. So let's go 400. This is going to be a laughably guesstimated 414. That feels like 14 milliliters. I'm not advocating you be so uh, cavalier with your measurements, folks, but that's just what I have in terms of uh, measurement equipment. Top back on. Go ahead and put the top back on our magical distilled water. Get the licks a good shake. course squeeze the air out now that blix is nice and happy top off so now for our e6 color reversal film processing we have our First developer mixed. We have our second developer mixed. Squeeze some more air out of them. And we have our blicks. 
So, uh, if you're familiar with C41 color negative processing, you'll notice that this is one more chemical than you would be using with your C41. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Like I said, I'm gonna let all this stuff mellow out overnight, come back tomorrow, and we're going to be loading up. I have so much, so much Provia 4x5 uh, to develop. Anyway, I don't even know what's on it. But we're gonna load up six sheets of Provia into the Patterson tank here. Now, if you're not familiar with some of this stuff, I go over literally everything in that dirt bag darkroom video series. This is my 4x5, like I said, uh, Patterson Super System, I think 54. Anyway, this is what I use to develop my 4x5. Um, it won't necessarily be a tutorial on all the stuff involved with developing your own film at home. If you want to see that, let me know. I don't want to tell you stuff that you already know, but it will at least be a documentation of my first time developing E6 process at home. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go load all this up. By the time that you see me again, we're gonna be ready to pour all this junk into that tank. Okay guys, it is a new day. I have donned my darkroom apron of power and I've just came out from loading six sheets of that Provia 100 that we're gonna use for our E6 development experiment into the Patterson tank here. Annoyingly enough, it turned out I had seven sheets and like I said, this only holds six, so I'll develop that one later. And I'm gonna stress again, I have no idea what's on this. I remember it, uh, two of the sheets are from New Orleans. I have no idea where the other sheets were exposed from. I'm not joking. I know at one point I even open the dark slide of one of these holders. So that's gonna have some contamination at the bottom. Other than that, I have no idea. So I'm kind of curious to see what is all on this. Now I have our chemicals, which should be up to temperature right now with our makeshift sous vide uh, temperature controller. If you wanna know more about that, I'll make a whole other video. But anyway, uh, the chemicals should be ready. The film is ready and let's cook. The first step in the E6 process using this Arista kit is gonna be a one minute pre-wash. We're gonna be developing at 105 degrees across the board. So I'm going to approximately put some 105 degree tap water in here, let it set for a minute. That's gonna really soften up the emulsion and get the film up to the temperature of the chemicals so it doesn't shock. I'm gonna do that right now. So the water is in and the timer is going. So one minute. Now while that's doing its thing, our next step according to the instructions is going to be a six and a half minute development, our first developer, and then it's going to be followed by a wash, which is uh, more or less going to be emptying out the Patterson tank here seven times with some clean water. And that's going to be followed up by our color developer for four and a half minutes another wash and then finally our blicks for six and a half minutes so you're in for uh, let's see what is this 12 this is 13 might as well call it a good uh, 18 minutes uh, with the wash and everything when everything's said and done now something interesting about this kit is you can adjust the temperature uh, we're doing it at the maximum 105 fahrenheit that's going to give us our shortest development time but you can extend the development time as you lower temperature so just FYI. Minute is up. I'm going to go ahead and reset the timer for six and a half minutes. So we have our first developer here. Again, this is more or less a black and white developer. We're going to put this in for six and a half minutes. Be sure it's getting shook up. So six and a half minutes. Uh, the directions call for agitation continuous for the first 15 seconds and then a three to four inversion cycles um, every 30 seconds after that. So here we go. Kind of nervous to be honest with you. And go. Let me start the timer. Chemicals are in. Top is on. And we're going to do this for 15 seconds. Thank you. 
knock out the bubbles and every 30 seconds I'm not going to film the whole thing but it's pretty much going to be another six minutes of what you just saw we just finished up the last agitation cycle for the first developer of our E6 about 30 seconds to go once that's done I'm going to empty these uh, this first developer back into our accordion bottle because this can be reused uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later but we'll pour this back in rinse it and then uh, put in the second developer our color developer all right that's it for the first developer I'm going to go ahead and reset that for four and a half minutes which is going to be our next timer and carefully pour this bad boy back into the tank yes I do have a funnel no I hardly ever use it Right. top back on that I'll squeeze the air out of it in a second I'm gonna go rinse this out so cool the rinse is done we are now ready for our second developer which is our color developer make sure it's good and shaken up and here we go I'm going to start the timer it's going to be the same agitation cycle as we had with the first developer so like I said once this is in I'm going to cut off the camera finish that up and then it'll be time for the next wash I wanted to cut in for just a second we're about uh, halfway through the second developer process to remind you that what's happening right now in the tank with this second developer is that a lot of the dyes are being brought out in the film this is again color positive film not color negative and the image is becoming reversed this is the color reversal process we could do this by exposing it to light but as I said earlier it's a lot easier to do it with a chemical so we've got about five seconds left on the second developer here I'm going to pour this back into the jug stop you so back into the jug with our color developer our second developer again careful careful and after I've got this poured back up we're going to be rinsing it just like we did after the first developer and then it'll be time to add in our blicks Time to rinse rinse is done now it's time for our final step and that is the blix the bleach fix I'm gonna set my timer actually for 10 minutes I misread that that six and a half minutes is for a rotary tube processor since we're using the hand tank it's gonna take us just a little bit longer according to the instructions everything else is gonna remain the same the agitations um, all that so I'm gonna pour in the blicks let it go for about 10 minutes and then uh, we'll rinse it off and we'll see what we've got so in they go yeah that is gnarly man timer is started See you in 10 minutes. Well, that was a massively long, what seemed to be a massively long Blix cycle. Uh, so the Blix is done, 10 minutes in the Blix. I'll mention that film, uh, color film goes to completion in the Blix, meaning that you can't necessarily over Blix uh, as long as you get in that minimum, uh, in our case, the minimum 10 minutes, uh, you should be okay. So 
The film is essentially done. Our Provia E6 home development. I'm going to go ahead and carefully dump this uh, Blix back into our bottle. Try to do it over the sink. Like I said, this will stain everything. Alright, let's uh, rinse that, the instructions say, for about five minutes. And then we'll see what we got. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I swear to you, I have not looked at these yet, so we're going to do this together. I've just finished up that five minute final wash. I'm going to check out these, uh, these sheets of film of Provia 100, and if they're good, if we had some development, I'm going to put in some distilled water and some photo flow and then hang them up to dry. So, uh, yeah, keep your fingers and toes crossed. Here we go. And that's probably going to be a no. Or is it? I don't know. I can't see. Okay, yeah, there's definitely some stuff there. So, uh, I don't know. They just seem very dark until they dry. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to put in the distilled water and some photo flow and hang them up. In goes a drop or two of Kodak photo flow, which is a surfactant. It'll help us avoid water spots after the film is dried, even though we're using distilled water and in goes the water hoping it's enough to cover the film perfect just barely let that get good and coated all right I'm gonna hang these bad boys up Okay, so the film has dried and cleared. I went ahead, I couldn't help myself, I went ahead and uh, developed that seventh piece of film that I told you that wouldn't fit in the canister on that first run. So we have seven sheets of film and out of those seven sheets of four by five, we have three that I am very pleased at, at least before we scan them here. Those three came out, there's images on there, they look great. Now the other four, one of them is uh, completely out of focus and the other three, I don't think that they were actually ever exposed. I think that's user error on my part. Uh, I've been teaching myself how to use a uh, 4x5 Grayflex speed graphic more proficiently and I was using the shutter plane, uh, the focal plane uh, shutter, excuse me, and you have to have the front shutter open and I just don't think that I had it open. So we'll consider those burner frames you know it's a learning experience why not so let's uh, get down to business i've got the scanner out here in the uh, soon to be new studio uh, i'm going to scan those up and let's see what we got The moment of truth has arrived. I've got Epson scan opened up and we're going to uh, scan these uh, sheets of Provia that we just developed using that Arista E6 kit. As always, I'm using my trusty V700 Epson scanner. I'm going to set the document type to film with holder, color positive film or just positive film, and we're going to hit the preview button. And the scanner's gonna take a second to warm up, so I'll fast forward through all that. Well, would you look at that? Yeah, they look pretty good so far. Let me turn them on to the uh, bigger preview here, just the normal. Man, I'm actually really liking that. I'm going to um, go back to the thumbnail and select all of them. And lately I've really been using uh, Epson's color restoration option. Uh, it's been working surprisingly well. So I'm going to turn that on 
Turn the unsharp mask off. And I'll tell you what, let's just leave it on. Why not? And then the backlight correction, I think we're going to leave that definitely off. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and scan these up. All right, sweet. So I've got these two sheets of Provia scanned and I've brought them into Lightroom Classic. First time I've looked at this, guys, so we're all in this together. Looks pretty good. This was a very overcast day down in New Orleans. I do remember that. This was ooh, Lafayette Cemetery number two, I think. That's pretty much how it was, yeah. So, yeah, let's zoom in. Uh, let's go one to one. Come on, Lightroom. There we go. A little shaky. All of these were shot handheld with my Graflex Speed Graphic, by the way. But overall, as far as color goes, a little shaky there. Looks pretty good. I don't see any kind of weird spotting or anything per se no weird color shifts let's look at these uh, again it's pretty blurry these are mardi gras beads hung up on a fence outside of a house like i said definitely not my best work but uh, these are more or less an experiment to test out this e6 developer i have to say it looks pretty good so that's some fuzz in there. All right. Overall, I think that's actually pretty cool. Pretty cool color. So, so my illustrious photography friend, I hear you saying, how much did it cost to develop this film at home? I took the liberty of going on the old internets here and looking up quite a few mail-in film processing services that actually do E6 developing. Not all of them do four by five, so I'm more or less gonna give you an average cost if I were to send my four by five sheets off to another processing lab like I have in the past versus the E6 developing kit here at home. Like I said, I looked up five mail-in processing places. Uh, I looked up Dwayne's out in Kansas, the Darkroom Lab, the uh, B&H photo mailer. You can buy an envelope that you have sent to, uh, actually it sends to Dwayne's in Kansas to be um, process your E6. And uh, let's see, process photo was another place and boutique film lab was another place. I'm not going to tell you the exact prices of these places out of respect for their businesses, but on average, uh, only three of those places did four by five. On average, the cost for plain processing, not push or pull, no scans was $6.65 per sheet of four by five, and that does not include the shipping. So if we look at the Arista E6 kit, which can hypothetically do 32 sheets of four by five, at that average $6.65 cost, that would cost us $213.23 to send off 32 sheets of film or the capacity of that Arista E6 kit. Now, the kit itself, I got it from Freestyle Photo. It costs $39.99 plus shipping. I've got a few other things in with that order. Shipping was $10.99, so I'm gonna air on the conservative side. It's going to be no more, uh, as this was filmed March 2020th, it was no more than $50.98 for that E6 kit, the quart kit, that can process 32 sheets of E6 4x5. Massaging the numbers a little bit, that makes for $162.25 savings for four by five versus sending the same amount of sheets off. So I can develop 32 sheets for 60, uh, 51 bucks, or I could send off 32 sheets and have it developed for like 213 bucks and not save that $162. So from a financial standpoint, developing your E6 at home makes 
pretty good financial sense. But uh, if you're probably developing this, you're not exactly doing it uh, to be frugal. You're doing it because you like the process and you want to have better control over your film. And I think this E6 kit does that. There are quite a few more kits out there from, uh, I think, Tetanol. Fuji makes an E6 kit. I think Cinesteel maybe makes an E6 kit. So there's actually quite a few of these things out there other than the Arista. That's just what I've used. That's what I use this time. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I'm not getting paid. That's just what I happen to use, but who knows? I may branch out if I keep doing this a little bit more and I think I will, I may branch out, try a few more of those kits. Okay, so in game here, as I hoped, Developing your E6 film at home is definitely not hard, guys. It may be a little involved, but if you've done any kind of home film developing, black and white, especially C41 color negative developing, you're not going to have any trouble at all. I virtually guarantee you. It comes down, uh, you saw how I did it, it comes down to uh, keeping your chemicals at the recommended temperature, adhering to your recommended times. If you reuse these chemicals, you'll have to multiply that each time to uh, compensate for the chemical exhaustion. I read in the instructions that you can expect a little bit of color shift as you reuse these chemicals, but honestly, I'm gonna process most of them in Lightroom and Photoshop anyway, so that's not really a big deal. So yeah, uh, I'm definitely gonna do this again. Um, I highly recommend that you do this yourself, or at least give it a try. There's some horror stories surrounding E6. That's definitely not true, as you've seen. But uh, yeah, it's definitely something you should look into if you have any interest in extending your developmental horizons as far as your own photography is concerned. Thanks a lot for joining me, everybody, on my first experience developing E6 process film here at home. It's extremely easy, definitely something you can do yourself. But as always, if you have any questions, comments about anything in the video, you know where to put them, down there in the bottom. I would love to hear from you, and uh, it looks if you Want to know more about the home development process in any way, let me know. I'll make any video that you want. You know, I love rambling about this stuff. But until next time, guys, again, thanks for joining me. I'm Adam Welch. And as always, I hate goodbyes.